Hello everybody, I hope uh, you're all doing well. Uh, so we're going to be talking about impulse momentum principles today. And uh, you know, impulse momentum methods is just another way of writing Newton's laws. Okay, so let me just write that out first. So impulse momentum methods is uh, another way of writing Newton's laws. Okay, and uh, this is you know in, in that in that sense um, you know even work energy techniques are similar in that sense because work energy is also a restatement of Newton's law in a slightly different manner. Okay. Um, so when we look at impulse momentum methods, there are two methods of importance for us or significance for us. Okay, and these are called the linear impulse momentum methods and then the angular impulse momentum methods. Okay, so let me go to the linear impulse momentum method. So this is my title now. Okay, so linear impulse momentum methods. Okay. So first of all, we will start off by defining linear momentum. Momentum at any time instant t. Okay, this is uh, given by a symbol g of t is the mass times the velocity at that time. Okay, so g of t is a vector okay so this is a vector in the same direction as the velocity vector okay and uh, this is just the product of the mass of the body or the particle times its velocity okay now this is the definition of linear momentum and this is something that we know from uh, basic physics as well. Okay, so what am I going to do uh, with this? Let me uh, go and uh, look at uh, this one. Uh, let me let me look at Newton's laws. Okay, so let me start off from Newton's second law. Okay, so from Newton's second law. Newton with a capital N. If not, he's going to come from his grave and get hold of me tonight. Okay, so from Newton's second law. Okay, I know that the net force on the body is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so the net force on the body, I can write mass times acceleration as m times dv by dt, right? Which essentially means that I can say the net force is now mass times dv by dt as you can see is nothing but the if i say m times dv by dt this is nothing but uh, the rate of change of the linear momentum so instead of writing it as m dv by dt i can write this as dg by dt this is because dg by dt as you know is m times dv by dt and under the assumption that the mass does not vary with time okay and we are assuming constant mass okay all right so this is called as the differential form of the linear momentum principle okay so this equation here so the differential form differential form of the linear impulse momentum and uh, my shorthand for this is LIM principle is this equation that we have just written so I'm just going to copy that equation and then bring it down here okay so this is an important equation I'm just going to underline this as well so this is the differential form of the linear impulse momentum principle and once again straight lines come on all right that's better okay so this is what i have now here is what i'm going to do 
I'm going to take that equation which I had from before. Okay, so I'm going to take this equation here, work with this equation. Okay, I'm just going to cross multiply. Okay, uh, so if I do this, I can say that, okay, summation of f dt, this is equal to dg. Okay, so these are all vectors. This is the net force and uh, this is the summation symbol. So this is the total force that is acting on the particle okay so this uh, maybe let me make that statement again so this is uh, the net force net or total force on the particle of course we are writing impulse momentum techniques for the particle okay uh, for a rigid body it's going to be slightly different okay so this is uh, just by cross multiplication I get this thing and then I start integrating it okay so because I can integrate this between the limits of t1 and t2 this I can integrate it from time 1 to time 2 or whatever is the linear um, momentum at a time t1 and then linear momentum at time t2 and then I can see that I end up getting the following okay so this ends up giving me t1 t2 net force f dt is equal to g at t2 minus g at t1 or if i rearrange it okay and if i flip around some of these quantities i can see that g at t2 or uh, let's say g at t1 plus integral t1 to t2 net force f dt is equal to g at t2 and rather than write this g i mean different people call linear momentum by different names this is unfortunate uh, textbooks pretty much suck for that reason because they they have different symbols for different things and then the textbooks also don't follow a common notation so uh, some books calls call linear momentum as little p okay and uh, some books also call linear momentum as l you know so i don't know what is a good symbol here so typically i'm going to avoid using this g at all i'm just going to call it as m times v okay so this essentially tells me the following m times v at time t1 plus integral t1 to t2 the net force f dt is equal to m times v at t2 okay and this is a very powerful statement and this is called as the integral form of the linear impulse momentum principle okay so the integral form of the linear impulse momentum principle is the following mv at t1 plus integral t1 to t2 the net force acting on the particle over this period of time this is equal to m times v at t2 and we have something nice here okay the term integral t1 to t2 integral f dt is called as the linear impulse on the particle between t1 to t2 okay so this is a definition here so this is called as a linear impulse okay so impulse is you know force times time essentially is the idea of an impulse okay and uh, so this essentially tells us that the total linear impulse on the particle from time t1 to t2 is equal to the change in the linear momentum of the particle that's essentially what it is telling us okay now in a situation when the net force is zero okay, so if the net force is zero so if net force summation f is equal to zero then it means that during the duration of the time during time t1 to t2 then we end up getting mv at t1 is equal to m sorry v at t2 
and this is conservation of linear momentum right which means that linear momentum at time t1 is equal to linear momentum at time t2 and this is a very simple statement of conservation of linear momentum okay um, you got to be careful this is by assuming the net force in all the directions to be zero so sometimes you can have a net force in one particular direction to be zero but need not be true in any other direction so it's only possible that sometimes you have conservation of linear momentum in only one direction and not in all the other directions okay all right so this is the idea of the linear impulse momentum principle okay and then in summary the two things that we know from here so the two equations to uh, consider okay so equations for lim okay the differential form and then the integral form i'm just going to copy that and bring that down here okay so this is the integral differential form of that equation and i remember i need to underline a few things okay so this is one thing here then i have this guy here which is the integral form of the linear impulse momentum principle and of course that has to be a little straighter okay then i'm going to copy this one and then bring it down and the usefulness of these things will be more evident when we start solving problems especially when you solve problems on collisions okay uh, always be wary of uh, externally applied forces you know kinetic friction forces reaction forces and so on because you have to include them in all of your calculations when you're doing linear impulse momentum okay so these are the equations for linear impulse momentum then we go to the next technique or the next method in this uh, very short uh, concept talk that is the angular impulse momentum technique okay uh, so i think i call this as a so i'm going to call that as b okay so b and i had a shorthand notation here so this is called as lim so i just want to write it as uh, you know lim linear impulse momentum methods okay this is going to be angular impulse momentum methods angular impulse momentum methods or this is going to be aim okay so that's our next uh, setup so the first thing is uh, we need to define angular momentum okay so define angular momentum about a point okay inwards this is called as the moment of the linear momentum moment of the linear momentum okay about that point and that is important okay so let's uh, maybe get rid of that exclamation there and put it here okay so what is the basic idea here uh, so let's let's say that you know i have a particle that is traveling along a certain path first of all uh, let me set up um, you know some kind of um, a coordinate system here okay and let me call this as the origin o this is with respect to a stationary observer here okay and then let's say that i have a particle that is uh, you know traveling along some kind of a path this way let's say that it's going from here to there then let's say that okay the particle is sitting at some point here at some point in time okay now what is the direction of the linear momentum the direction of the linear momentum is going to be the same as the direction of the velocity so it's going to be tangent to the path okay so the direction of the linear momentum i'm just going to be drawing it here so this is going to be m times v at some time t okay so this is the particle p if i have to find the angular momentum about the point o okay so i'm going to define it as h not okay so this is angular momentum about the point o 
how will I find it? I'll find it by first of all defining a position vector. Okay, so this position vector. Okay, let me maybe draw it in a different color. So let's say that this is the position vector. Okay, moment, how do you find moments? Moment is R cross F, right? So in this case, you think of uh, the momentum as some kind of a force thing. And then say, okay, this is going to be R P slash O, which means that my angular momentum H naught in this particular case is going to be R P slash O crossed with M times v of t okay this is the angular momentum about the point o if i choose a different point then the angular momentum is going to be different because the moment arm is going to be different okay so suppose i choose let's say some point which is uh, you know suppose i'm an observer who's sitting here okay and then i call this point as the point a then what is the angular momentum about the point a okay so just as a digression right uh, so let me um clear this up and then bring it a little above here okay so suppose i wanted to do you know h naught about the point a then i have to have a different moment arm here okay so that's going to be r p slash a okay and so if i write h about the point a that's going to be r p slash a cross m v of t okay so angular momentum depends on the point that you are looking at okay and this is the moment arm from that particular point to the line of action of the linear momentum okay so that is the basic idea here all right so what am i going to do with this one so consider okay point o and then i know that the angular momentum is going to be r p slash o cross m v of t okay all of these are vectors i'm going to differentiate both sides okay so d by dt of h naught is going to be d by dt of this cross product r p slash o cross m v of t or d h naught by dt i do the cross product for each one of these terms this is going to be r dot p slash o crossed with m v and then i'm going to have r p slash o crossed with m v dot okay right so vector and uh, suddenly i see some magnifying factors here v dot of t <laughs> okay but notice r dot p slash o is just the velocity of the particle right rate of change of the position vector with respect to a stationary observer is the velocity of the particle which means that r dot p slash o crossed with m v of t is the zero vector which means that the entire creature can be discarded from our game okay so then here is what i end up having and what is v dot v dot is velocity okay further rate of change of velocity i'm sorry so v dot is equal to the acceleration the rate of change of the velocity vector right so this is the velocity vector as you can see and so this tells me that m times v dot is equal to m times a but what do you know mass times acceleration is nothing but the net force acting on the particle okay so this is just going to be the net force acting on the particle okay so which means that i have now dh not by dt is equal to rp slash o cross to the net force acting on the particle and this is the point typically in a class where i would ask a question hey what is r cross f r cross f is nothing but the net moment about the point o right so this essentially tells me that okay dh not by dt is nothing but the net moment about the point o okay so this is because this is by definition this is the moment about o okay and this is of course uh, mv dot is ma is equal to force summation of forces from newton's law so 
so you see that newton's law is being used here to obtain all these equations so these are in essence just a restatement of newton's laws okay so now i come to the differential form of the angular impulse momentum principle and that is exactly what i have sitting right in front of me here okay so the differential form of the angular impulse momentum principle is the following okay so i'm just going to copy that equation and then write it down here this is the rate of change of angular momentum about a point is equal to the net moment acting at that particular point if i choose a different point a stationary observer it will be the net moment about that particular point okay so this is the differential form of the angular impulse momentum principle and i'm going to do the same thing on this one like we did for the linear impulse momentum principle okay so i'm going to take okay dh not by dt is equal to the net moment m naught which means that if i just cross multiply i get the following so net moment m naught times dt this is equal to dh naught and uh, here you just want to make a note this is the net or the resultant moment about o due to the net force on the particle okay and uh, this is what i end up getting and uh, you know i'm going to go back to my equation here so this essentially means that if i rewrite it so summation m naught dt is equal to dh naught and you know my next step i'm going to integrate this from t1 to t2 which means i'm going to integrate this from uh, time one to time two which is going to give me the angular momentum at time one and then that's going to give me angular momentum at time two the difference between the two is what i'm going to end up getting okay so this essentially tells me that hey integral t1 to t2 summation m naught dt is equal to h not at t2 minus h not at t1 okay so that's something that you can easily see here or rather than write it as h not and h not and so on things like that and i'm just going to write it as r cross mv okay so if i rewrite it i get the following r cross mv at time t1 okay plus integral t1 to t2 summation of all the moments dt is equal to r cross mv at time t2 okay which essentially was that this is going to be h naught at t1 this is going to be h naught at t2 okay and uh, so we now come to the integral form of the angular impulse momentum equation so the integral form of the angular impulse momentum equation or principle okay so let me underline this this is very very important especially when we do problems on impact or collisions okay as you'll be seeing in uh, the set of uh, videos that i'll be posting okay so the integral form is the following i'm just going to copy this entire thing here okay and as we did i guess i'm not having enough space so maybe i'm just going to write it down here or maybe hang on a minute let me start squeezing out some of these terms a little closer okay not to make it look uh, as good but you know this is uh, i just want to have it on the same line okay appreciate your patience as i'm doing all these things okay so this is the integral form okay and uh, then here i can define another quantity like we defined the linear impulse i can define an angular impulse angular impulse
on the particle between t1 to t2 is this quantity which is this integral quantity right here okay so i'm just going to copy that and i'm going to paste that here so this is angular impulse we had a linear impulse now you have an angular impulse okay and if the net moment is zero okay so if net moment is zero in time interval from t1 to t2 then r cross mv at time t1 will be equal to r cross mv at time t2 and you know that this is going to be conservation of angular momentum of angular momentum about a point okay so we're almost there okay we just have to uh, summarize all the equations that i have used for the angular impulse momentum technique okay like i did for the linear impulse momentum okay so in summary the equations for angular impulse momentum principle okay you have the integral form of the angular impulse momentum principle which we had written down here somewhere okay so this is the integral form i'm just going to copy that and bring that down here okay so that's the first one then i'm going to have the differential form or, or i'm sorry this is the differential form i think i'm almost going to sleep here okay it's around one o'clock on uh, on sunday all right uh, so i have the integral form here so i'm just going to bring that down okay copy that and then paste it down here okay so these are the equations that uh, are used for the angular impulse momentum principle and this term here the integral m naught dt that is defined as the angular impulse okay and uh, you always want to th think of this as applied at a particular point okay so this is equations for angular momentum impulse momentum principle at a particular point okay so something i want to write down here at a point okay so this is essentially like taking summation of moments about a point okay so this is not a general equation at every point because it's going to be different at every point okay all right so that about wraps up things for us uh, so let me maybe briefly go back and look at uh, uh, the basic equations for the linear impulse momentum these are the equations for linear impulse momentum i have the uh, differential form and then i have the integral form okay and this quantity here which you can see integral f dt is going to be the linear impulse okay and likewise you know if i go back here and uh, very last page of our uh, write up here i have the equations for angular impulse momentum principle which is the integral form which is this big equation here and then the differential form which is the equation that you're seeing here and why well, cannot stress this enough these are all applied at a point point of interest oh okay all right so this uh, wraps up uh, our uh, concept talk on uh, momentum principles and momentum techniques uh, added together with the work energy technique these these form a very powerful set of equations which which gives us another way of looking at how to obtain equations of motion and so on for for particles and rigid bodies okay and uh, you'll see as as we go further that okay these same things can be tweaked up and written for rigid bodies as well and applied in in some sense to obtain useful information on the motion of the bodies all right i hope all of you are staying safe and uh, taking care of yourselves all right bye bye